sorry about that. I'm assuming it must be warm down there if you're going outside. Thank you. Yeah, it feels really good. <laughs> Where are you tonight? Just like a, a, light, a light sweater. A light Indiana, s- Indianapolis. Oh, hell no. Nah. It ain't no, hell no. Nah. It is not. It was 80 something degrees today. Uh, up in it. It was like 82 degrees today. Man, I'm over here in Gary, Indiana. It's cold as fuck out here. All you have to do is stay a minute. Just take your time. The clock is ticking. So stay. All you have to do is stay. And we're back. That's what's going on, everybody. Lockout men in the place to be. And welcome back to the Lockout Men podcast show. Did you miss me? Did you miss me? I miss you guys. Man, I had a funky, funky, I ain't going to say 24 hours, but I'll say a funky 10 hours. Yeah, 10 hours. Yesterday, yes, yesterday was rolling. All of a sudden, the death started fucking up and... I had to post up somewhere. I had to wait the roadside come. They came and got me, cleared the cleared the coast, and I still had the same problem. So I said I was going to go live last night. I was going to talk to somebody yesterday. But then I got in my feelings because they had to send a tow truck. I was feeling kind of bad. I was like, man. Let me just shut everything down because I, I was just done. I was just too through, too through. Well, again, y'all, I am Lockout Men, and welcome back to the Lockout Men podcast. I am here today bringing you in this episode, I'm bringing you guys a interview, podcast interview to this evening. If you like content like this and more, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell and that all button for more. When you hit that all button that lets YouTube know that you want my content when I drop it and when I go live. I want to welcome the LOM community whenever they decide to pop up in here because YouTube is slow with the with the notifications anyway. But we're going to keep the show moving because this is just a behind the scenes for them. And this right here is the actual show when I'm looking at you guys right here in the camera. And that's how I do things over here. That's what's up. Well, tonight's guest, simple, female driver, rocking out with a particular company. I'm sure she'll let you guys know what the company is if she wants to. She don't have to. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. She might want to. I don't know. But we about to find we about to find out more from this young lady. I would like to welcome to the show Highway Journey. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. Hello. Hello. And how are you tonight? Hello, everyone. How are you tonight? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. How are you doing? Well, from the opening, like I said, um, (laughs) I, I, I was on my way. I was doing good timing. I was doing good timing to Ohio. Picked up my load from Illinois, as usual, per usual, heading back to Ohio mm-hmm. with a load. So it was making good timing. I would have got there. I had like maybe about an hour, about two hours, like an hour and a half to play with. But I had two hours to get there. So I'm rolling. All of a sudden, the idiot light on the uh, on the Volvo comes <laughs> on. And it says that you Aww. says that you about to derate in about thirty minutes, and I'm like, oh no, we can't, we can't have that because you know once you derate, you can only go five miles an hour, and I I can't have that on a on the turnpike. So I pulled over, pulled at the right. uh, pulled over at the service stop, service station, service area, service whatever, and. Um, Called up the company. I said, hey, company. I said, we got a problem. You know, we about to we about to derate. Did you try uh, Regen? I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I tried Regen, but wouldn't work. All right, we're going to send somebody there to force Regen in. I was like, all right, listen here. When you send somebody, make sure you send them with the, to come with the right equipment. And 
They need the right. square. They need the square plug and not the round one. Because last time this happened, <laughs> y'all brought the, the dude brought the one the round plug and he came from so far that we we yeah. It, it just it was mish mush all the way around. So the dude came with the right one, plugged it in, typed in the computer, forced regen, and we still had the same problem. Uh it was uh mm. still showing that I was about to derate soon. And we, it was about the D rate in about 30, about 30, 40 minutes or something like that. So he said, you know what, bro, instead of hooking up to the truck, you're not that far from the dealership. And I was like, okay, okay. How, how far is the dealership? He was like, the dealership is mm -hmm. like, he was like, the dealership is like literally like 20 minutes away. I was like, bro. I said, we only got 30 minutes on here before we start the D rate. <laughs> I'm not, you know, right. we, we on the turnpike. There's no, you know, we're a straight shot or whatever, whatever, you know, straight shot. And I'm like, cool. But um, he was like, hey, you know, we, he's like, hey, we got it. We got this. So I was, I was like, all right. So we turn around, get into, uh, you got started up. And he was, I mean, let me tell you, this dude was cruising. I'm talking, I'm, I'm talking cruising. And <laughs> I, I'm, I'm trying to keep up with this dude. Like, you know, the speed limit is like 60 because we're going, you know, they got like construction going on on the turnpike. So the speed limit is 60. Tell me why this dude going like, uh, like 70 or something like that and i'm like wow i had to call this dude i'm like yo bro um yo my man i'm i'm, I'm trying to keep up with you <laughs> i'm trying to keep up with you he was like oh okay i i, I see you i see you and i was like okay okay so we get uh we get to the spot we post up and uh waited uh waited till in the morning and um, and yeah, they they got me in first thing in the morning. Couple out, you know, a couple hours later, they uh they told me that you know they they cleared the colds and everything. And after that, uh, they got me back on the road. But they told me to let you know they told me that it's a hairline crack in the in the death tank or some shit like that. So now I had to take it over to okay. I had to take it over to my shop because. My shop is over here like, yo, is it under warranty? They was like, no, it's it's it's, it's a 2016, bro. It's not not under warranty. They was like, lock out, bring the truck back to the shop. I was like, yo, why you can't just get the motherfucking fits here, man? I don't want this shit to <laughs> I don't want this to happen right. again. So it was get like, it fixed, let's go. Yeah, they was like, it's they was like, nah, you good. So I'm about I'm about an hour away from dropping my load, so I'll be uh I'll be dropping my load, then head back over to uh, Bowling Brook, set it in the shop for a hot minute, let them change out what they need to change out, and then I'll be back on the road. I'll be back on the road. Yeah. So, so what the game. So what about you, Highway Journey? What about you, man? Where 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 are you at? How was your day? How was your day? I had a great day. Um, See, I hate I had you already. My PM done on my truck. Mm. I uh, just purchased my first truck. Oh, okay, okay, um, okay. I, I bought it. And okay, purchase your first truck. This is thank you, thank you. Is this is is this a? I goal? bought it uh, the end of August. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, just got out of orientation with my new company, so all right, I'm pretty excited about that. All right, so let's start at let's start at the beginning. Then let's let's start at the beginning. So, what's uh what's your what's your story? How you uh you know where you come from? Uh, what you was doing before you got into well, trucking and all that good stuff? Well, I'm from the Midwest, um, Indiana. Before trucking, I was driving the city bus 
for eight years. Mm-hmm. Before that, I drove the school bus. That's where I got my uh, class B. So I started out with the school bus first, and I did that for two years. Okay. I went ahead and went to the city bus because I needed full-time work. A lot of people know that driving the school bus is only, you know, so many months out of the year. You get the summer off, and it's like part-time work. Now, so I needed full time work. So now, how long you? Went. Now, how long you was doing? Now, what you was doing? You was doing school bus for eight years before you jumped on city bus. I went. I did school bus for two years. Oh, you did school bus for and two years. And then I went. Yes, and then I went to the city bus, and I did that for eight years. Okay. Okay. So. Before, oh, before go. I came into trucking. Okay. So school, so of course, uh, driving the school bus, like you said, you only had, you know, so many months out of the year. Uh, do you still get paid for the months that you're off for a school bus? Well, well, the township that I worked for, we did because we were on a, I believe it was 27 week contract so when you were out of school technically you would still get paid Mm -hmm. did you did you did you um, did you still drive doing the off season or you just went on ahead and just said bump it i'm i'm going to take my i'm I'm going to take my vacation the same time that kids take theirs well it was a little different because our school system that i was at they also had year-round school so they were on a slightly different schedule than traditional schools. Mm -hmm. So it just kind of just mattered when it mattered when the yearly schools were out. Sometimes the traditional schools had to go and vice versa. So, but it's still kind of the same thing. You still had some of your summers off. One of them may go to school before the other one. That was just it. But the most important thing was, I still got paid the whole year. <laughs> That's what's up. That's like what's I didn't up. miss it. I didn't miss any money, and I could do other things. So, so being a school bus driver for for the two years. Well, let me let me rewind back a little bit. Where did you Where did you get your uh, CDLs from? Uh, the school bus. Um, the township trains me, so okay. I had to pay like a small fee, like to actually get my license and to actually take my test. Because, you know, it's like with driving the truck, you still have to take that last right. test to qualify and get your uh, Class B license. Mm-hmm. All right. So the school so the school trained you. You you got your Class B. You rocked out with them for two years. Right. How, how was it being – how was it being – uh, a school bus driver, you know, driving all them kids back and forth to school. How, 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 what was the experience on that? How old was they, by the way? Well, when I first started, you know, you're kind of like a sub in, so you got to do whoever didn't show up, that's who's route you got. So that was pretty hectic. I had elementary, middle school, high school. And, you know, some of them kids were really, really rowdy. So um, I can't remember how long I did that, but I did get my own run. And my own run, I had, like I said, a a year-round school. And I had middle school and elementary. My elementary was a packed bus, but my middle school was like half of a bus. Mm -hmm. So it was really a laid-back and chill type of run. Okay. Okay. So I really, I didn't really have a lot of issues out of my kids, and you know, as far as the elementary was concerned, I just separated them by grade. You know, mm-hmm. the younger kids sit in the front, and the older kids sit in the back, and that worked out just fine. Okay. Okay. That's what's up. So, you now when you was just a sub in, when you was just a sub in, and you had to drive different routes. What was the experience with the what you said it was rowdy? So what was your experience with that? How 
how how why would you say they was rowdy like what happened you have any you have any type of horror stories that you can tell us about what happened not horror stories but you know how it was when you were in school when you got that substitute teacher who didn't really know you mm -hmm. so it was time to act up a little bit more mm -hmm. than usual mm -hmm. so it was stuff like that you know just a little bit more hyper when they get out of school my thing was hurry up and get them off the bus that was always my goal. If it got too rowdy, then, you know, I would call the police on them, you know? What? But it rarely got to that unless they had a fight. Because, you know, schools in our township, they have their own, like, school police. So if they okay. acting up on the bus, you can call and they come and take them off and take them home or whatever. It wasn't like the city police. They had their own individual security for stuff like that so it wasn't like out of hand nonsense like that you know they get off the bus and they take them home or they might get suspended or something like that mm -hmm. but nothing too crazy the oh, okay. city bus is where it went down that's what you want to talk about right there now, oh yeah we we we, we coming we, we we coming to the we we about to come <laughs> to the city bus right we, we we about to come to the city bus right now but uh, as far as the uh, as, a whole mother cake walk because I was about to ask you, you know, I was I know you said that you you left school bus because you know it wasn't the the money wasn't wasn't there no more. Well, it was just part time. Oh, so, okay. You know, the check, and then you got paid every two weeks, so it was mm. the money was pretty light. And at the time, my children were smaller. They were school age. And, you know, I just needed more money than that. Okay. So that's why I chose to go to the city bus and do get those um, 40 hours a week. It was a union job, you know, great insurance. Now, city. That's what I needed at the time. Now, city, what, what city are we, what city are we talking about uh, that you went to drive the bus uh the bus for Indianapolis oh, okay. in Indiana. Okay, okay. Now what's now in Cleveland where I'm from, our 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 metro system is called RTA, Regional Transit Authority. What is it called in Indiana? Or Indianapolis? Indigo. Indigo. Okay. So, yeah. How did you how did you uh, get on with them? Just the application, you know, and a clean record. You know, I've always kept it for the most part. I'll, I have to take out some time because in my past, I do have some speeding tickets. And mm -hmm. I did get my license suspended at least once in my lifetime. But after that, I, I kept my license record clean. So... It, was, it hasn't been hard for me to get a job anywhere as that regard. So I just applied, you know, took their training. Is I think uh, is is the process for getting on with uh with Indigo is is it the same process of getting on with a with a semi truck company, or is it different? Um, it's it's almost the same. I mean. It's local, so you get to go home. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, as far as the uh, semi is concerned, you may have to pack a bag and get on the Greyhound. No, but, you know, you no, 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 no. What I meant, what I meant, as far as the process is, do do the Indigo have a have an orientation that you had to that? Yeah. You, oh, okay. Yeah. So did you have? You know, it's and what I was saying by it's being different. Did you know? Did you have to go? Uh, uh, did they have orientation? Uh, like you know, how are we doing semis? And being that is, you know, being that is in Indianapolis is, you know, you you like you just said, you went home every you know every day. But as far as the process goes, is is it the same? Do you go out with a trainer? Do you uh, take us through the process of of getting on with a with a metro bus? 
Well, I believe the training was like three or four weeks. It's been 10 years now. So, Mm -hmm. but there is like a sit in orientation training before you even go out and drive. Um, we did a thing where I think we had to, we had to ride the bus to learn the route. So, uh, it was on, our, my class was very small. It was only 10 people. So I was only linked up with one other person. And then you do go out with the instructor and learn the route. It's called route familiarization. Okay. So you do that within those weeks of training. Um, you're not in uniform yet. Um, you do that, and at the end, you do one, like, final road test where you're picking up passengers, and uh, the instructors would get on and, like, have a check-off list of all the things you're supposed to do. Okay. And then after that, you get your uniform, and then kind of like with the school bus, you're kind of like a sub-in for a while until you're able to pick your run. Now, let me ask you this. Um, why are you driving a bus? Do... Do they have, do they have like a GPS system or they just, or, or you just get on the bus to just familiarize yourself with, with the route that you have to take? Right. That's what the, uh, familiarization was for. But then, you know, they give you little maps and stuff if you forget. So they don't, the GPS that they do have is just for like in-house. Mm-hmm. Say if something dramatic will happen to your bus or you get lost and or you break down and they need to find you, that's what it was for, but it wasn't for you to like follow. Now did you because did, you had to remember that. Could you have a GPS on a bus? No, it doesn't work like that. Okay. Because you have to you know, you have to say if I'm on a route ten and right. those goes out of downtown one way mm-hmm. and then it goes down say 10th street so okay. far okay so there was really no need for a dps okay 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 so say like you know uh the buses in my area you know just go up st Clair, up to 123rd turn around go back down st Clair, uh downtown right. turn around Right. Go back up St. Clair. Okay. Okay. So yeah, you, okay. So right. there's no, there's no, uh, there's no GPS. Uh, there's, there's really no need for a GPS. If you just going up and down, going up and down, up and down, up and down. The All same right. street, like the whole time. So you was, uh, so you was driving, right. you was driving a bus for eight years. What was your experience with that? Oh my goodness! You know, it's just—it's a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. Mm-hmm. I can imagine. With the public. I can imagine dealing with the dealing with the public is very stressful. Mm. Dealing with management, but management and a union job is very stressful. What you know? No, I, oh I, yeah. No, I thought it was just the public. Well, now, now what? Why would management oh. give you guys any issue? Well, say a customer complains, and then they have to follow up that complaint, and a, a, some of it can be some BS. Um, I agree. But they put these orange cards, is what they call them. It'd be on a small orange card, and mm-hmm. it'll tell you, well, you need to come in because we need to talk about this because somebody said you did A, B, and C. Okay. You know, it, it would be that sometimes, and... Let me see. I got suspended a few times in the beginning. What? Um, it's a very, it's a very strict schedule. Like you can be one minute late. If you were one minute late, you got sent home. You might as well just turn around because you were done for the day. Now you talking you about not be you, late. You talking about like one minute late coming to the to the bus stops and stuff like that? Well, you had a the way it was set. Yeah. The way it was set up, you had to be on the bus stop at a certain time to catch your bus in a certain location, which was usually downtown is where the drivers transferred. Or sometimes you would pull out of the garage like your 
you would come straight into the uh, garage is where we kept the buses. Mm -hmm. And you'll have to clock in. If you were one minute late or you wasn't on your stop when you were supposed to be, that bus would keep going and you were just, you wouldn't get paid. You have to go home and then you would get a penalty for that too, which you can only get so many penalties. Like I believe it was seven. And then if you did a no call, no show, you would get like two penalties for one. So you would get twins. (laughs) All right. So so that stuff would add up fast and it knocked a lot of people off. So you saying that so the but being a bus operator for the city was a union job. So did the union protect or did the union protect you on on some occasions? And why wasn't the union were, there for you when you got suspended? Well, they were supposed to. Well, my suspension was. Uh, let me see. At least one of them was legit. Um, <laughs> There was this lady, because, you, you know, the city buses have wheelchairs, right? Right. So I was on an older style bus, and I picked this lady and her husband up, and she had, like, a really flimsy wheelchair. Okay. So you're supposed to tie down four, and I did, a like, a three tie down. Okay. And I, I was, uh, I proceeded on after I strapped her in, and I had made a right turn into a... Uh, mall area okay so when you i made the right turn too fast and plus it kind of went up on the incline oh, and she God. fell out of her wheelchair oh she fell out of her wheelchair oh, and um yeah did, did they have did somebody have a camera Some, so somebody had to have a camera right oh they're they are well Camera phones weren't popular at that time oh, but the buses oh, have cameras oh, okay. a lot of the mental illness was the biggest thing and then people trying to bait you into bullshit basically i mean there were people out there who would just literally come on the bus just to cause trouble Mm -hmm. with the driver you know that's it's uncalled for it's unnecessary but that was some of them some of those people would just do that on the daily on a daily basis and that can be mentally exhausting you know and some of those routes were harder than others i'm going on certain side of town the people are a little more rowdier good you know don't give a fuck and they're gonna let you know you know you don't have to do anything and these people would just literally come up to you starting whatever for whatever um, horror was, story. Was there any was there any occasions that you had to call that you actually had to call the transit police on somebody? Well, there was one occasion. It was a fight on my bus one time, but the guy got off so fast that you know I just kept going after he got off. I wasn't about to wait on no police. It's just really a report at the end of the day. Call it in mm-hmm. if he's gone everything's okay you can just proceed on but i mean people have some bus drivers have had full-blown fights women have been attacked i think one lady some guy ripped her shirt off and was trying to rape her and, on the bus i mean yes a bus driver this had happened to a lady bus driver what um i um between drivers and passengers Never me, but I've gotten into some verbal altercations with some of the public before. But um, you can see how that's just exhausting. You know, who wants to go through that on a daily basis? So I knew that I had to go. And my plan was to only stay there for three years. But like I said, I ended up staying for eight because of you know, family reasons and, you know, I just, and my kids were kind of young. I wanted to get in the truck after three years, but I just had to extend my time on the city bus, but I made it through. And, you know, after you get so much seniority, you're able to pick better runs without a lot of the nonsense 
So let me you ask know, you somewhere in the middle. Let me ask you this: is is it the same? Like here in Cleveland, you know, you 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 got your rough side of town, and then mm -hmm. you got you 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 got your cool side of town. Uh, for, yeah, absolutely. For for us, absolutely. for us, you know, the people of color was the ones that gave the most issues, while the people of non-color didn't. Did that work? <laughs> did that work? Uh, did you encounter that as well in Indianapolis? Well, we do have a rougher side of town, but. It was all of them, both of them, black and white. Mm -hmm. It was both of them <laughs> giving you, so you the BS, you know. So you say you got, so you got, you got smoke from both sides, from 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 both sides wherever you went. Oh yeah, yeah. Has anybody some just come on there just to have a fit? Has so has it, anybody both sides? Has has anybody tried to? try to bait you into a fight? Not into fight, but just, you know, altercations back and forth, and they want to bait you into just arguments, you know, slowing down the bus. They gonna not, they're not going to do what you ask them to do and holding up the bus. Well, call the police. I ain't getting off here. You know, stuff holding up the bus because they – want to have this issue with them and it's people are getting off work people are going to work they don't have time for that mess mm -hmm. no matter what side of town you came from it's people on there that have to go to the doctor go to work go to school you know that bus has to keep moving and for whatever reason people like to come up there and just hold everybody up and they don't care all right so what about what 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 about it, it may not have happened to you, but, you know, there's a couple of, you know, a couple of videos with uh, with drivers getting assaulted. And then I, I seen, you know, in my young years, I seen a couple of drivers, you know, get assaulted as well. What uh, you say you you haven't got assaulted, but w what uh, what precautions that's in place for you guys? That if you guys do get assaulted, because I know like if y'all retaliate, y'all get like y'all get fired or suspended for protecting yourself. So what do, what do Indigo at that time while you was there had in place to protect you guys from situations that that uh, that may put you guys in danger? The only thing that we had is we had like security buttons mm -hmm. that were uh, specially located if you needed help like immediately. And if you push that button on the sign that usually says the destination, it'll say call 911, I need help. It would go out that way. And then there was a recording that would automatically happen. I, I know it was one going on already, but it was a different type of recording. Mm -hmm. Once you hit that button, that would have sound and stuff to it. Um, and as far as if you were assaulted or anything, if a passenger hit you or even act like they were going to hit you, mm -hmm. you had a right to defend yourself. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. Did they not be in the but, but. that was de but that was debatable. <laughs> oh, <laughs> because some people have defended themselves and still got fired. So, wow. there you go. Was you being the bus driver? Was you guys able to have personal protection? Like I, I know you guys no. probably might not have no gun, but was you able to? have a pocket knife or mace or something like that? Not at all. Um, you had to be very creative. Like, we had these steel bars that would, you know, those emergency, um, this wasn't a window, kind of like a pop-up on the top of the bus, mm -hmm. you know, that 
in case the bus flips over or something, you had those, you pick them open or whatever. Well, we had these steel bars that would be next to the seat to mm. like pop them up or pull them down to shut them. You could use that. Um, we had these black, you know, the old school phones, the receiver part. Yeah. It was shaped like that, but it was black and it was hard. So, I mean, if you needed to use that, you could. But the thing was, some of these people attack you and they can attack you without any altercation. Mm -hmm. So it's like the thing is, you could be stuck in that seatbelt and get an attack because you got to wear your seatbelt. Okay. You know, not wearing your seatbelt was a no-no. But those two things were the things that people, we talked about amongst drivers that you could use if you needed to. All right. So you say you can't, you say you can protect yourself, but it's like you said, it's debatable. It was a guy in Cleveland. It was a driver in Cleveland. I'm not sure if you've seen that video, but a uh, lady got up in his face. I think she spit at him and dude got up and says, you going to jail now and gave her the uppercut mm -hmm. from hell. <laughs> yes, he did. That. that was a very popular video among coach operators. <laughs> I, I see. Yeah. And when they added when they added the video game sounds to it, man, it, it made it it made it more hilarious, <laughs> man. It is so crazy, man. So, but that's that's how that's how much the frustration it just builds up. Mm -hmm. You know. And that guy, I believe he had been there for a long time. Yeah, he'd been so there he for yeah, he'd been stuff. there for a long time and cool. unfortunate and it's it's an unfortunate uh incident and you know, he I'm not sure. I probably have to go back and 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 see the follow up, but if I'm not mistaken, I think he lost his job, uh, if anything. Yeah, he did. So um, yeah, it's kind of crazy but that the that the young she, lady come she back. Spat on him first, right? Yeah, she did. She spat on him first, and she right. came, she came on the news trying to try to play the victim card. Oh well, now I got. Oh, yeah. I got a. Uh, I, I got. I can't sleep at night. Uh, I got headaches and uh, ew. Yeah. Shouldn't have. But the drama she crawled. He exactly, calls, right? exactly, exactly. <laughs> Hold on for a second. So Hold on. All right, at the sound check. All right, go ahead. Now, what you was about to say? I was just saying for the drama she calls, she calls now she's playing the victim. Yeah. It's pretty much like that. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly, exactly. All right, so from so from there, you 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 pretty much got tired and and uh you 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 jumped in the semi why what was the what was the uh what was the what was the thing about semis that you liked it and you know and why you migrated to them okay so here's the story mm -hmm. um i never really thought about driving a semi until um i used to live in these apartments and one day there was this big red uh what is it? Carter Express okay. truck. And it was a beautiful truck. I believe it was a Volvo. It was sit it kept being outside, just sitting outside. And I'm like, damn, that's a nice truck. I wonder who truck it is, you know. But I kept going mm -hmm. about my business, you know. And so one day I came out and there was a black lady sitting in this truck. Okay. And I thought to myself, I was like, if she can drive that truck. I know I can drive that truck. So uh, one day I, I called her and I got to talk to her. She said she used to be a nurse. And, you know, uh, for a minute there, I was thinking about nursing as a career myself. Mm -hmm. She's like, yeah, I got tired of nursing. So I came into trucking and she said she made good money. And that's, at that point, I knew that's what I was going to do. And I just started planning from there how I was going to get there. But at the time I was married, my kids were small and it just wasn't the time, but I knew my time would come. Okay. So, okay. you know, uh, 
I was driving school bus then in the city bus. And at that point, my plan was just to stay at Indigo for three years. Okay. The issues in my marriage came up. Um, mentally, it wasn't a good time dealing with that job, dealing with a stressful home. It wasn't time for me to just go yet. But I knew that I was going to go. I just didn't know when. So, okay. 2006, I got a divorce. I moved. Um, and I waited a little bit longer because it just wasn't time yet. And then I ended up moving again. And the second time that I moved, I had everything in place. My ex-husband was willing to, you know, step in because all my girls still live with me. Um, my oldest daughter, she was out of school and working. My mother lived close, so I, I just got them all on board. I'm like, look, <laughs> I'm about to get out here on this road. This is what I want to do. I have everything in place as far as family help. And they were old enough. Everybody was, let me see, everybody was in high school by the end except for my youngest. He was in middle school. Um and I just made that leap. So I started doing my research, you know, YouTube research mm -hmm. uh, and just gathering information about different places. And, you know, which one kept coming up, <laughs> which one, which, which one you decide, which one you decided to uh, start your career off with. I started off at prime. There we go. Um, Everybody, right? Um, <laughs> put in my application, talk to a recruiter, let her know what was up with me and how I wanted to do it. And she told me how to do it. And I told her, you know, after all my information and everything cleared, I set a date to leave Indigo. And uh, she had my ticket ready for me and I think I gave them at least a two week notice. Now now so now you still you still had you still have your class B, right? Correct. All right. So you decided to go you you decided to go with Prime because you you could get your license through them, right? Correct. Okay. So at that time, what what year is this that you that you going into prime? Two thousand eighteen. Okay, so at that time, it, did you have to get your did you have to get your permit, or being that you had your class B already, did you need to get a permit? I did. Um, I was well, prime wanted us do at the time i believe it's different now mm -hmm. i believe they finally got in trouble for that mess mm -hmm. so when you came there you had to hand over your license basically you had to get a permit and the address was at campus in right so i had to give up my indiana license for a missouri license permit okay okay so that was no problem. They, I just switched and they gave me a permit. They gave me a class A permit and they gave me my class B license. Okay. So I had both of them. You know, uh, went through training and everything. Training was, for me, it was cool. I got a trainer, like, right away, a male trainer. Mm -hmm. And, um... And that was cool because he had a 10 speed. And given that I have never driven a manual at all, I wanted to learn that. So that was cool with me. Okay. So and, you didn't, um, so you won't get your, so you won't have no restrictions on your license as well, right? Correct. Okay. All right. So you got. Plus, and plus that, that was my goal because I've never, I had never driven one. I have been. I have been driving since I was eight years old. My mom taught me how to drive. So, <laughs> all right. You know, I could drive anything. So, except for a manual. So, yes. I wanted to learn that. All right. So, you got, uh, 
you know, you did the, the, the TNT phrase and all that other good stuff. So I'm fast forwarding. You got your license and you still had to go out with a trainer after you got your license. So during that little time of going out with the trainer, what was the experience with that? Well, you know, it, it, it wasn't as bad as some of my uh, classmates had it. But at times, my trainer was a little trifling, you know, and I had to deal with that. And, um, you know, he just had stuff all over the place. He didn't, he didn't have a odor problem. He just had too much stuff problem. And he had a tendency of throwing his stuff on the floor. Mm -hmm. So when I got out of the bunk, I'd be stepping. You'd be stepping mess, all over your shit. Cool. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, that, that wasn't cool. So, oh, so he was a messy motherfucker. Up, very much so. Um, was you able to finish? I ended up. I ended up. Uh, fracturing my back on his truck. What? Um, how you yes. managed, how you managed to do that? Please tell me you didn't okay, fall so. inside the truck. <laughs> yes, yes, I did. <laughs> Are you serious? Okay, so yes, I had just came off a of home time. He had picked me up from home. Yeah, okay, and he was still. He was still driving. We went to Illinois to do the drop off. And so when we dropped our load or whatever, it was my time to turn, uh, drive. So I ended up getting on the top bunk to get my sweater because it, it ended up being colder. Okay. So, you know, I'm preparing my stuff to get ready to drive. He hopped out the truck because he was dropping the trailer in the dock. Mm -hmm. So, I was on the top bunk. He hopped out to disconnect from the trailer. So, I was still on the top bunk putting my, getting my stuff together. He hopped in the truck, didn't even look back or tell me he was about to move. Oh and he disconnected from the trailer and it bounced. And it, so jerked, you, hard and it jerked you off the top right bunk. Right up out of that Oh, bunk. man. And he used to have this uh, big, you know, those big coolers they sell at the truck stop. Yeah. Well, he and had you, one on the floor. And you fell so right on I it. when I fell, my back hit the cooler. Did you have to go to the hospital? At that, at that time, I did not go because I thought it knocked the wind out of me. But I thought to myself, I was like, fuck it. I'll just shake it off. <laughs> right. <laughs> what I'm saying? I didn't think it was that bad, but what? The, and I hold, had a hold up, right quick. What what did he what did he say when when that happened? I mean, he said, "Oh, I knew it was going to be that." What? Yeah. Like he ain't say, "I'm sorry" or "My bad" or "Are you all I, right?" I, I believe he asked me if I was all right or something. And then he was like, did you fall from the top? No, nah, I I, 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 I fell know. from up underneath. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so how long y'all so, two, how long y'all, yeah. how long y'all two was together? Or what did, did you finish out he with him? I did. Um, oh, okay. I did. I finished out with him because I didn't want to, I was hearing all of the rest of the student stories. I'm like, well, I'm going to stay with him. At least I know what I'm dealing with, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but that night when that happened, not that night, after my drive shift, when I tried to, you know, do my 10 hours, mm -hmm. my back was contracting, like, so bad. And I knew it was bad because, like, if I laid a certain way and was breathing, I could feel the fracture. I could feel that rib, like, moving. Wow. So we got all the way to Georgia, and I told him, I'm like, look, I'm going to have to tell them what happened so I can go get this taken care of. So I did that and what, gave what did, the report and everything. And I, 
What did what did Prime okay. what did Prime say about it? Well, you know, they had to get their report and they they actually took care of me. They didn't say too much, but you know, they got the people involved that they needed to to cover themselves. And mm-hmm. and for me it wasn't about that. I just wanted to heal and get this over with and get out of these people's face and get my own truck. So, I mean, they took care of me. They, I got to the doctor immediately. Um, I had to take a, a few, I think it was like 21 days or something like that off. So uh, I couldn't drive after that because they gave me some painkillers and muscle relaxers. And um, I went back to Prime and they gave me my own room and stuff so I could do my, um, uh, I guess, basically short-term disability. Mm-hmm. So, um, I, like I said, it was like 21 days or something. So, um, after that 21 days and I was cleared, I went back home and that's when I switched my license back over to Indiana. Mm-hmm. No, that's not right. I, let me see. Yeah, that was right because I still had to get my class A in Missouri. So I, when I tested out, I still had a Missouri class A license. So, um, I just went and handled my life and stuff, you know, came back home and did that. And that process blew me away because when I got here, Indiana made me take every test that I had ever took all over again. Like I was a new resident and I was on fire. You know what? I think I, you, 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 you know what? I I think uh uh a lot of states is is kind of doing that. Like that's why that's why I talked to one driver and he said, you know, whatever you do, you know, if you decide to move or anything like that, he said try to keep an address. If you're if you're a CDL holder, try to at least keep an address where where you got your license from because he said when you had to move and and switch your license over you have to do the test all over again so he said if you had like yeah he said if you had some issues with that with the um with the general knowledge the air brakes mm-hmm. what was it general knowledge air brakes and doubles and triples or no Co- uh, combinations, combinations, combinations. Tanker. Well, no, not tankers, but uh, well, yeah, you, yeah. If well, you, for well, me, because for, prime. Uh, okay, you, to have your okay, yeah. For me, it was for me. It would be well, yeah. It would be my tankers too. So for me, it would be the general knowledge, the combinations, and the uh, air brakes. And then, as for me and you, it would be tankers. We would have to take all that over again. So, yeah, th- th- that's some good advice for people. If you got your license in one state and you decide to move to another state, try to get, have an address at the previous state. <laughs> so, well, you know what? It's crazy. You should check because, like I said, I had. My uh, roommate, she was from Ohio. She didn't have to do that. I had a room, another uh, a classmate of mine. She was from Mississippi. She didn't have to do that. I know it's so only some states that states does that. Set, that's uh, what I'm saying. I right, know. Yeah, I right. knew Ohio. Well, of course, Ohio. That's where I'm from. Yay! Yeah, but um, yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, I knew Ohio. You don't have to do that. But like, I think you have to do that in Texas. I think you have to do that in Texas. Mm. And okay. Virginia, I think I may be, I don't know. Uh, you know, let me know in the comments below if you have to do that in Virginia. But um, but yeah, I, I know Texas definitely. If you move down to Texas and you switch your license down there, you have to do it all over again. So you you had to do it all over again when you came up to uh back to Indiana. Did you have to? Did you have to take the road? Right. Did you have to do the road test too? Oh no! At least that part I didn't have to. I'm 
but don't give him any ideas. <laughs> so how how long was you was with Prime, and are you still with him? Well, I stay my year and I bounce. Uh, that was always the plan. Um, but I did learn a lot. I learned. I stayed a company driver. I did not do the lease with Prime like uh, did a they, lot of other people did, do. It. Did Did they want you to? I mean, was there like did they kind of like uh, did they kind of like you know push you to do a lease because it's like everybody. Like I talked to um, a few drivers so far that I've interviewed. I say out of the drivers I talked to, maybe about three, four of them went lease right off the right off the bat. Right. So was they did did Prime kind of like try to talk you into leasing, and you just decided like, no, nah, that wasn't for me. They didn't try to talk me into it until it was time for me to pick my truck. So um, when I went to go pick my truck, I was like, okay, I'm here to pick my truck. He was like, well, you don't get to pick a truck. We give you a truck. And I'm like, okay. Mm. So the truck mm. that they gave me mm. was a lightweight. Mm. Just slapped you in and the face. Like, I just, was like, just slapped you in the face. Right. Like, no, you, you ain't, no, you ain't picking shit. You, you give him what you give exactly. him what we give you. Hmm. Damn. Right. Damn. That's... So when I got Ooh. when I got out there to look at the truck, it was a lightweight. And now I, what's the... I looked at the truck. I went. To... What's what's the uh? What's explain what? what a lightweight is? A lightweight is a smaller tractor. It doesn't have. Okay, so it doesn't. Right behind the seat is the bed. There is no shelving like right behind the seat, like okay. a traditional tractor. Okay. Which takes a lot of that weight off of it. It's lighter. Okay. Um, and you got paid like five more cents to do a lightweight at that time. Huh. So they would say, Well, you make more money because you're in the lightweight. Oh, oh so, okay. So without the comfort you, Without you, you sacrificing comfort to make more money, pretty much. Correct. Okay. So, so with comfort, with comfort, you make less money. Huh. Right. Okay. So if I want the comforts of the truck, I'll make 30 cent. And if I don't want the comforts of the truck, I'll make 35 cent. That 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 sounds about right. There maybe, you go. maybe maybe the cent per mile is different now, but but I'm just throwing a ballpark oh, yeah. out there. I'm I'm just throwing a right, ballpark right. out there. Right, okay. right. Just like that. That's crazy. So my plan was to bring my youngest daughter out on the road with me, so that wasn't going to work for me. So I turned right back around. I gave her her keys. I said. This is too small. I said, I came here to bring my daughter out here with me for a while, and that's not going to work. So she took her keys back. Mm -hmm. Miss, you don't get to pick a truck. Okay, lady, here we go. So the very next day I get a call in the morning. We got a condo ready for you. You know, we, we, we got the truck ready for you. Mm -hmm. And surprise, surprise, it was a condo. Uh, international 2017, I believe. Condo. So double, I got what I wanted. Condo. Double bunk with shelves? Yes. Okay. Um, space for a fridge. You know, you could put... It didn't have a fridge, but, you know, it had space for a fridge, and it had two beds, and a plenty of shelving, inverter, APU, all that. Okay, that's what's up. So, um, but you, but now, uh, but but now you're getting paid less because of it. 
it, I wasn't worried about that. I just really wanted to get my time in. Thank you. Get some traveling. That's what's up. You know. Thank you for saying that. that was- because a lot of people <laughs> that's coming into this game is always worried about, like in the Facebook group, I get that all the time. They be like, yo, I'm a I'm a new driver. I'm coming out of school. Yada yada yada. Where can I go and make the most money at, bro? You're not gonna get the most money off the rip. You're not gonna get that. No. Be lucky that you get forty cent. Be lucky to get right. that. It's all about right. getting your experience out here first, man. Don't talk about. Don't talk about now. If you're already coming in and you got you know some issues, some responsibilities. That might be a problem because, you know, you're only going to get paid a certain amount and driving with prime. You know, you guys get your money from the, the 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 trainer. They put they put your money into his money and he pays out of his money to pay you. Mm-hmm. Right. So, so we're looking at about what we're looking at about what? Five hundred, five hundred, six hundred dollars. Uh, a week until you get into your own truck. Uh, let me see. I, I'm trying to think. I believe it was seven minus taxes, so about yeah, five hundred and a little over five hundred, depending on what your taxes were a week. Okay. From okay. the trainer. Now, do the tra- Which, like mentally? I was already prepared for that. Do the trainer. Do if you know, do the I already know the answer, but do the trainer get paid extra after you after you upgrade? Do they still get paid while you're still there? I don't know. I really don't. Okay. You know, I know they got a bonus for if you when you took your skills test, if you did the trifecta, if you got all three of them, they got a bonus for that, and you did too. But I don't know how it works like after you got off the truck. I kind of remember that somewhere in there, but you know, I went company. I just I wasn't worried about all this stuff. So, but you could it could be correct on that. They probably still get a little few dollars handed to them for you staying and completing and all that stuff. All but right. I wasn't sure because I wasn't a trainer and I wasn't, you know, a lease operator, so I'm not sure. So your time will, so your time will prime, and uh, and and your time in the in the trucking industry, as well as as the bus industry and the school bus industry. Have you ever been discriminated against because you're a woman? I don't think so. Not for me. And if it was, no. I'm. You I'm not, gonna not say no. in all in all three industries, so. or yeah, in all three industries, you haven't experienced any uh any discrimination. No, not on my part. Okay. Okay. And unfortunately, I have seen some women have, but I mean, I live in America, so. <laughs> You know, people say the N word to you mm-hmm. sometimes, somewhere throughout your life, and maybe that way. But you know, um, I'm gonna have to say, not that I could see or even bother with, but I'm also I'm a loner, so I stay to myself. I let people do what they do, and I just mind my own business. You know, so. All right. So what about um what about what about any challenges since you upgraded? What about any challenges? Have you uh experienced any challenges out here since you uh upgraded to your to your truck at Prime? Well, you know, the biggest challenge and I'm sure this is for most people, is just backing. <laughs> backing in the tight spots and backing and you don't tear your stuff up for somebody else's stuff. Mm-hmm. I would say that was a challenge. Um, another challenge is, you know, I did reefer, so 
crazy appointment times, being there at two o'clock and, you know, um, or any hour of the day, your load has to be picked up or dropped off. That was an adjustment. But other than that, that I would say that was pretty much it. Okay. Okay. All right. So you, uh, bounced, you, you did all you could, did all you wanted over at Prime. And, uh, what what made you, what made you go further to, uh, to where you at right now? You, you, you decided to buy your own truck. What route did you take to, you know, to, to, to get your truck? Did you, uh, did you, go and buy it straight out? Are you leasing it where you working at now? Are you leasing it from a dealership? What's, what's the, uh, what's, how, how you get to, you know, to where you at now? Well, right after Prime, I went with the local company. I had a job before I left Prime. I wasn't really sure, to be honest, but I still kept doing my research on what I could do while I was at my local job. So my first local job was with Quickway. Mm-hmm. And we did uh, Kroger uh, dry groceries. I was on the dry grocery side. I stayed there for about a month. I stayed, the equipment was raggedy as far as the trailers. And I didn't know these stores were so unorganized and nasty in the back mm-hmm. so I, I, I and plus I had to use a um, what do you call that thing a pallet jack and pull the groceries off and stuff which I was okay with but local I learned is not laid back they will take your whole day so what I found out is that after work I would have to go straight to bed and I would get straight up to get ready for work and that's that how, wasn't cool with me. That's that's yeah, how, I wasn't about that. That's how local is. So that's so you went local before. Exactly. So you went local before Ooh. you decided to get your truck. Yes, but that's not my first local job. I only stayed there for like thirty days, <clears throat> and then I took a break mm-hmm. because I went straight from the city bus to Prime. Right to that local job without a break. Like, I didn't take a week off. I just went job to job to job. Mm -hmm. So at that time, I was like, okay, I'm going to just take a break. I did Lyft and Uber. Um, I wasn't broke, but I just stayed on top of my money by doing that. Plus, I called that a break because I could do it as I please. Right. So around, I knew I at the end of the year, I was going to find another job. So By January, I was pulling tanker. I worked for Ruan. Uh, uh, I was pulling raw milk straight from the farm. Mm -hmm. Um, I did that for a little bit. I didn't like the split seat thing and those trucks. They never cleaned them as far as the inside. They had over a million miles on them. I got paid every two weeks. So I said, well, let me see what else is out there. And by June of this year, I started working for a company that she actually interviewed a recruiter, Food Miner. Okay. Okay. Uh, that's, that's another what's up. tanker job. Okay. I was pulling raw sugar. And at that point, I knew that I wanted to try. To get my own truck or do the leasing thing. So before I came to Food Miner, I talked to the manager about it. I said, look, I want to come try your lease program. And she was cool with that. She was like, okay, you just got to be here, a company driver for 30 days. Mm -hmm. And, you know, then you can do the lease. 30 days came and went and I'm calling and I'm asking and, I'm not getting any answer, and I'm getting the, you know, run around. I said, okay, I, I can see where this is going, and they think I'm playing. I had a mentor that I had met while I was at Ruan, an old school driver, and he just put me up on a lot of games. 
So he told he told me that he had owned trucks and all that, and he knew some people in the at Landstar, and I told him, you know, Landstar was a company that I was looking at, and you know, I just stayed focused. Now, I didn't think that I was just going to be able to straight buy a truck cash. I was thinking I was going to have to lease a truck, but I really didn't want to because those leases, I don't want to be paying $1,200 a week to nobody for no truck. You know, you taking most of my profit away. That's right. not cool to me. So I did a little more research, um, found some cheaper trucks that were had a lower weekly a month payment. And then my mentor was like, well, check this website out. I believe it was commercial truck and trailer. And he had been looking at some trucks and he told me to go look at some of these trucks online. And I promise you not the first day I found the truck within my price range. And I told him about the truck and the truck was in Ohio, uh, Defiance, Ohio at a Volvo. And he's like, okay, I'll go with you. We go check this truck out, you know, and he went with me. We went on a Saturday. We checked the truck from top to bottom. Went in there and told uh, the salesman what we saw that may have become an issue or have an issue. Um, he went down on the price. I didn't buy the truck right off, but I told him if it can, because I uh, already applied with Landstar. And so this is the part I'm just really looking for searching for the truck. And so I said, if it can pass a land store inspection, then you'll get the truck. Or there's not too many things wrong with it, I'll make a deal. All so, right. so, so, so did it, did, did it, did it pass land star? Long story short. No. <laughs> but it was in, within price range still and the, salesman took a thousand dollars off so it was like i only paid like 200 and something to get it fixed okay okay so and so so you so brought the truck so it you brought that bad so you brought the truck land stars out of the picture because it didn't pass land stars uh five no. point inspe- oh no no it it didn't pass but here's the deal you can get that stuff you have the option to get it fixed. And since I didn't buy the truck yet and it wasn't that bad of a repair that I had to do, I only had to change out the four um, airbags. Oh. That's all I had to do. Oh, okay. So when, he knocked that, when he knocked that extra money off, I could pay for that repair and then it passed inspection. Oh, okay. So did you, so did you rock out with Landstar or... I did. I bought the truck, you know, finished all the loose ends that I needed to do with Landstar, and I just finished orientation yesterday. Oh, okay, so you, so as of right, so as of right now, you're 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 going out with Landstar, so you're able to um, so you're able to uh, pick your own loads. Of course, uh, yeah, you're able to pick your own loads, so you so you'll be leased on with them. What's um? Well, first, I want to thank you for coming on. I really do appreciate you taking the time. Uh, oh. you you um you uh, of course, pick up you know pick out your own loads and all like that. Are you going to be able to do it from right. a, from from a low board, or do they give you? Do they give you a dispatcher and then the dispatcher would give you like three, four loads that you could choose from? Well, at Landstar, from what I understand, we are our own dispatcher. So we get to pick our loads off of the load board. You go to the load board, pick where you live. Like I'm in Indianapolis, so I'm going to leave from Indianapolis, which is a very good spot to leave from that I found out. Okay. Um, and go wherever I need to go at whatever rate I want to go at. It's really good right now. So 
you can put in two fifty, you can put in four dollars a mile and still get a a good batch of places to choose from coming from Indianapolis. Okay. So um I dispatch myself basically. Okay. Well that's what's up. Congratulations. Uh on uh you. you know on getting the truck and uh and you know what's your goals what what's your goals for it in into the future was what you got your first truck so you want to you want to expand it you just want to just ride the ride the wave or what's what's your goals for uh for this new adventure I think I just want to just keep doing what I've been doing, ride this wave, and then just see what's out there, what other opportunities are out there. But like I said, I'm laid back. I'm an introvert. I don't need a whole bunch. So me just having this one truck is okay with me, you know. But like I said, when I left Prime, I didn't know exactly that I would end up here. So I don't know where I'll end up. But my ultimate goal is to just buy a house cash you know get the deed in hand if i need to make minor repairs i'm okay with that um okay but i'm 43 years old I, i'm not trying to rock out with no 30 year mortgage so you <laughs> how, know <laughs> that's my how, next goal you're 43 how old's your kids now uh 25 19 and 17 oh, okay okay they 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 all grown. Okay, so you they you, take care of themselves. Yeah, you, basically, you pretty, except you, for you, the youngest one. Yeah, you you pretty you pretty good after all of that. All right, all right. Oh, Hi, yeah. Highway journey, everybody. I appreciate you coming on and uh, and chopping it up with me, man. I enjoyed it. Especially the uh, especially the city bus, <laughs> the city the city bus era. Right. You know what I'm saying? But um, but uh, you 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 made it to owner operators. I mean, uh, operators, operator. Uh, you 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 brought your truck straight out, or you um, you brought your truck straight out, or you are you are you, are you paying on it? No, I bought it straight out uh -huh. I, title in hand i got i paid for it on a saturday i got my title with my name on it on monday that's what's up that's so what's up. congratulations it's mine. so congratulations man. thank you well highway journey thank you for coming on i really do appreciate it if you guys want to come on and chop it up with the lockout man you can do that you can hit me up in the gmail by Damn, I forgot that quick. You can hit me up in the Gmail by LockoutMenPodcast at gmail.com. Or you can come over to tw uh, Twitter. I don't even fuck with Twitter. Where that come from? Instagram. You can hit me up over there. And if you guys like content like this and more, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell and that all button. If that all button lets them know that when I go live or when I drop videos, I want to say thank you to the LOM community for being here with us tonight. You know what I'm saying? A couple of comments I had to, I had to erase, you know what I'm saying? You know, my, my, my platform, I open it up, you know what I'm saying? So for as long as we're going to be on, I'm going to give them, give them the floor. You know what I'm saying? And it's an interesting conversation. I like it. You know what I'm saying? I enjoy it. And I hope you guys too. Anyway. All right. And on that note, uh, I would like to say thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And again, don't forget to subscribe if you want to. You don't have to. But on that note, we are out of here. You guys take it easy and I'll come back at y'all with another video. Peace. Searching, searching, searching. Searching, searching, and searching, and searching, searching.